Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A chaotic scene at a local shopping plaza. A suspected thief runs for help after taking two bullets. The highest ranking member so far in the UAW embezzlement scandal shows up in federal court. We'll start there tonight at 6. It has been six weeks since the feds arrested UAW Region 5 Director Vance Pearson. Finally, today he made his way to Detroit for his first appearance here before a federal judge. Local 4 Business Center Rob Maloney live tonight at the UAW GM Human Resources Center with that story. Rod. Yeah, Devin, you know, uh, this is in many ways a monument to the UAW. Corruption is going to get sold. The UAW has also said that Vance Pearson is a monument to corruption. They voted him out of the union essentially last week. He resigned and, uh, and retired so he didn't have to face an Article 30 trial. And today he was in federal court and uh, he had to hear from a judge for the first time here in Detroit. This is Pearson with his lawyers this afternoon. Pearson balding, wearing a black vest, gray pants, and black shoes. Came to federal court for an initial appearance here after a couple of visits before judges in St. Louis, in this case, where he lives. Now, Pearson faces embezzlement of union funds, money laundering, wire fraud, and conspiracy, among other charges. At the same time, the Fed searched former UAW President Gary Jones' Canton home back in August. They also searched Pearson's St. Louis home and office, confiscating golf clubs there. A week later, the feds charged Pearson in a million dollar conspiracy. Google Maps helps us with the pictures. The feds say UAW Region 5 would hold legitimate annual leadership conferences at the Renaissance Palm Springs Hotel. Using what they call master accounts, Pearson and other high union officials, the feds say, would rent off site villas, bill them through the master accounts, run through the hotel. The feds say Pearson and others would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars at restaurants like the steakhouse and at golf resorts where they would take what they would please from the pro shop. The complaint says these high UAW officials would allegedly spend the month of January and sometimes February inside a gated golf community in this rented villa with a pool and hot tub, eating high-end steaks, drinking expensive scotch and smoking fine cigars, playing golf and partying, a winter vacation paid for with union dues. Now, uh, here is the situation with him. He's due back in court on January 6th. He's out on a $10,000 personal bond. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, we're getting in this case is that it looks like the feds are working pretty hard on him to try and get him to take a plea deal, which, of course, would mean him perhaps testifying against his boss, uh, who was Gary Jones, UAW president, former UAW president, who has yet to be charged with anything in this case, even though they did search his home. Back to you. Uh, any comment from the UAW on today's hearing, Rod? Well, yeah, you know, the UAW said that, the, that what Vince Pearson, if in fact he did do it, uh, is disgusting. Um, and they also said that they're working very hard to change the atmosphere within the union to try and get better uh, reporting mechanisms in place as a way to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. Yeah. All right, Rod. Detroit police have suspended a sergeant after the shooting death of an officer. And tonight we've learned what sergeant or what that sergeant was previously fired for by DPD. Sergeant Ronald Kidd is accused of sitting in his patrol car and not responding to the scene after officer Rasheen McLean was killed. Kidd was previously fired by DPD after he stood by while his female partner was getting beat up. Uh, beaten up. Kidd got his job back through a plea agreement, but Chief Craig says someone else signed his signature approving that agreement. I hate to use the word forged because that constitutes a crime. Yeah. I will just say that someone signed my name and it was not my signature. Kidd could face criminal charges as police investigate. One of the busiest travel periods of any year, and if you look at the weather map, the national map, it looks tricky for a lot of people. Not looking good. Let's check yeah. in with Ben, see how's it going. Hard to find a spot that doesn't have some sort of weather impact, and that does include us. We're looking at Fort Life Radar where the showers have already started, and they're going to intensify overnight. There'll be spots that pick up over three quarters of an inch, maybe as much as an inch of rain, and that is before we really wake up tomorrow morning. Temperatures are going to be relatively steady here through the evening in the mid 40s, so this is mild for this time of year, but again, the rain showers will intensify, especially after midnight tonight. And then here comes the wind. Wind advisories in effect from 9 a.m. tomorrow to 9 p.m. Gust up to 50 miles an hour for us, 
but further south and west, those gusts could hit 60 miles an hour. We'll talk about how much of the U.S. is affected by that, what your Thanksgiving forecast looks like, and a big mess for the weekend all in a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, a Farmington Central High School teacher has been suspended following allegations of using a racial slur toward a student. A letter was sent informing parents of the apparent use of the N-word. The suspension is for 14 days with pay, but Farmington Public Schools Superintendent Bob Herrera says the district is still deciding if the teacher will be allowed to return. The bigger picture here is for me is that we need to make sure that we're, we're not placing children or our students um, back in an environment where they don't feel comfortable and it's detrimental to their learning. We're told the district will make its decision next week. Shopping Plaza off Outer Drive on Detroit's west side became a large crime scene after several shots were fired in a midday robbery at a cell phone store. The armed suspect was himself shot during the robbery. Jason Colthorpe was there as police tried to piece together what happened. Police were on the scene shortly after it all went down at 11 a.m. at the T-Mobile on West Outer Drive. They say a man armed with a gun tried to rob the store, but in addition to the two employees, there was an armed security guard and he opened fire. According to police, as many as 13 shots were fired, all by the security guard, and the suspect was hit twice in the arm and the midsection. So with two bullets in him, he comes running out of the store and then goes that way. Police say they followed the blood trail and it shows that he went into this neighborhood, possibly to get rid of his mask and anything else incriminating. Then they say they did something strange. They tracked him circling back close to this location. But why would he come this way? Take a look at what's at the other end of this parking lot. The Henry Ford Medical Center. They believe he went there to get medical treatment, and that's where a scout car was able to pick him up, take him to another hospital under arrest. At last check, he was in surgery and critical. So it's two scenes police are working, and I'm told they are looking at security video from inside the store and matching it to everyone's account of what happened. And right now, everybody's story is the same. On Detroit's West Side, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Jason, it appears a mistake has been made during construction on I-75. MDOT confirmed today a contractor used an incorrect mix of concrete on a portion of I-75, and now that portion has to be redone. We're talking about two left lanes of northbound I-75 between 13 and a half and 14 mile roads, plus the Big Beaver and Rochester Road exit ramps. The pavement will be removed and replaced next year. The strike against Canadian National Railway is coming to an end. The strike has been blamed for long backups of noisy trains in Oakland County, getting on a lot of people's nerves there. It's just one of the problems of the ripple effect that's gone all over the place from this strike. But a tentative agreement was reached today between CN and the Teamsters Union. CN employees started heading back to work, in fact, this afternoon, and the railroad hopes to be back in full operation tomorrow morning. Well, some people don't have to worry about whether they'll have enough food on the table this Thursday for Thanksgiving. For others, not that simple. Larry Spruill was at an event today aimed at eliminating that worry. It's not your Black Friday line or people waiting to get into a concert. They're all waiting to get inside for the Detroit Thanksgiving All-Star Give Back. It means a lot because some people don't have the money to buy Thanksgiving dinner, so that means a whole lot. That's very special. And I'm a one of them because I need a turkey. Nina Reed is one of the many in line at River Rouge High School. She tells me this year was a struggle to prepare for the big Thanksgiving meal. But now she's able to fix not just a turkey, but all of the trimmings. Sonia Hatch is here also. I'm out here for the uh, turkey. Help me out with the food. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. God bless them all. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Blessings from those giving back this year. Detroit brought out the big stars for the give back. Rapper Big Sean, actor Hill Harper, and former NBA player Derek Coleman, just to name a few. Somebody asked me how does it feel to see such a long line outside, and I'm like, well, it's not like a line for a concert. It's a line to because the family's in need. So hopefully it just inspires people to want to give back more. There's a wonderful energy of community here. And ultimately, this is about the people. And it's about all of us coming together in one place at one time to celebrate. That's really what Thanksgiving is all about to me. Now, because of the large turnout like the one behind me, organizers tell me they now realize that this is needed beyond Metro Detroit. They plan on expanding it to more cities next year. It's just bigger. You know, every year it grows. And next year we're really looking at expanding like to the Eastern Market. So 
we want to have All Star Give Back Eastern Market, All Star Give Back River Woods, All Star Give Back Pontiac, All Star Give Back Saginaw. Because again, you look at it as people in need. Reporting in River Rouge, Larry Sproul, Local 4. That's awesome. Detroit always answers the call. And that's great. Uh, by the way, of course, don't miss our coverage. America's Thanksgiving Parade getting closer and closer. All starts here on Local 4 Thursday at 6 a.m. We'll get you going with a special edition of Local 4 News today. Then our parade preview begins at 8 a.m. And all everything is so exciting about a Thanksgiving in Detroit gets underway at 9 a.m. I hope you'll join us either in person or right there at your television. We're looking forward to it. All right, time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt is in Los Angeles tonight with what's coming up. Hi there, Lester. Hey, Devin and Kim coming up. We're going to talk about the search for survivors after a deadly earthquake and the race against time to rescue a trapped child. Plus, the pressing need for doctors that is helping some younger physicians wipe out their student loan debts. Yeah, and you know, some of these doctors have thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt left. Lester, and I understand you found that some doctors are unable to pursue their passions because of all of that money they owe. Yeah, I mean, some communities are simply underserved because doctors have these crushing student loan debts and can't afford to work necessarily in a public hospital. So we're going to look at this program that helps doctors and communities and is being adopted in other states as well when we see you on Nightly News. Oh, boy. Oh boy. All right, Lester, we'll talk to you then. I've got a friend who's a doctor. He looks forward to 2040 because he tells that's me that's the year that he'll be done with his loans. Yeah. Yeah. We know of one boyfriend who probably won't have to ask for the blessing of his girlfriend's father. Okay, Dr. McGeorge is here with a story of a priceless gift that may have saved a life. And Tesla's CEO clearly looking to pick a fight with Ford, but does Elon Musk's pickup truck test actually hold water? That's next. She's the mayor of Chicago, but her heart bleeds maize and blue. Her eyes are focused on Saturday's big game at the big house. We can't go year after year and not have seniors have any experience.